Hello everyone, this is Marius from the GeoDesign course. And today we're starting where we've left off last time. I promised you a few updates. Now one will be on the points. So essentially the procedure that I showed you last time was was correct. The thing how to add a point to a surface definition it was correct. What I didn't do, however, is I didn't refresh my point group. So I'll just show you exactly what happened. That's where we stopped over here. We have our point and a point group, and it's added to our FG island surface definition as a point group over here. And if we take it to the object viewer, we can see this little dent over here um, that's caused by the, by the point. And then I, what I did is I went ahead and I changed its elevation value over here. So let's make it 15. And um, when I took the surface to my object viewer, it didn't really show any differences here. Right? And I was a bit puzzled that the island point group didn't have an exclamation mark here. So it seems to be a bug. In Super 3D, I just needed to right click it and then hit update over here. And then it propagated the change to, down to my surface. And because my surface of the island is set to rebuild automatic, it just did exactly that. And then now if I take it to 3D, you can see that the point is there. And the question would be you know, like, how many of these points do you want to introduce to, to create this ridge line over here? Maybe rather than working with points, you just want to create a feature line uh, so just like that, I can also add it and then say that the feature line would be, let's say, at uh, let's say 15 meters elevation and then bring it all the way to here and let's say the same elevation of 15 meters. So it would be a flat line over here. I would go ahead and maybe delete this point and now you see the the island needs to be updated, the point group. And then I can select my feature line, uh, add it to my surface. The surface will be island. OK. Accept the def defaults over here. And then already by looking at the triangulation, I can see that it's a complete different result. And you see, we have created a <laughs> Uh, a fairly unrealistic but uh, result, but uh, but at least the triangulation is much better. And now we can move back our feature line using maybe our quick elevation edit. Let's just see around it, it's 9.8. So this would be actually, let's just have it at maybe 10.5 meters. And the other end over here also at uh, 10.5. And Perfect. So now we can have a look at it again. Object viewer. Ah, I guess I, it didn't catch the last point over here. So maybe we'll, let me just do it one more time. Feature line, quick elevation edit. Yes, it's still at 15. I want it to be elevation 10.5. And just to double check, it should have zero grade. Both of them are there. Yes, and now again, right click object viewer. And you can see it's it's a much better result if if this is something that we're aiming for. Here I have some triangulations issues. Uh, you can see how it must well be I have to flip these two triangles. So let's just go ahead and do it again as a refresher. Select the surface, edit, swap edge, select this one uh, and this one as well. And let's bring it back to object viewer, double check. Here and the triangulation is fixed. There's some issues in the back. You would use exactly the same procedure to fix that. So um, this hopefully answers the question how to add points to the point group and uh, later to the surface definition. We did everything correctly. Sometimes if, if the result doesn't match your expectations, make sure that you just update things over here. Right click, update, right click, and rebuild depending on which one you're working with. Some of you also ask me, you know, how is it that I get this you know, selection cycling menu? So essentially, if I have two or multiple pieces of geometry on top of each other, how can I select one from the bottom? 
And if you go to this hamburger menu over here, it says customization. You just need to find the selection cycling um, option and it has to be checked on for you to be able to see this particular icon over there. And then this icon has to be then turned on. So selection cycling has to be turned on and this gives you this little menu that pops up the moment you click on some, some features. So these, these are sort of like quick refreshers from, from our Tuesday class. And let's see what we want to work with. Okay, one more, one more question that pop, popped up during the class was regarding additional triangulation that would happen if, uh, you know, if we have organic shapes that are essentially concave like that, that we have shapes that are closing onto each, uh, onto itself. So let me just quickly turn this one to a uh, polyline. So p edit command, if I want to convert it, yes. What is the precision? Let's just accept the defaults over here. Um, make this window slightly wider so that you can see the commands over here. You can see it has created tons of vertices. It doesn't matter for now. I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of some of them in a second. But the uh, important part is that it's a polyline and we want to convert it to a feature line. So create feature lines from objects, accept the default. Uh, yes, we want to erase it. Okay. And now that we, we have it, let's just select the entire feature line and go to our, uh, let's just raise it because right now it's at zero. So let's raise it to elevation of, uh, let's say six meters, uh, just to be in the ballpark of of what we have around us. And you can see that Zero uh, 3D is lagging a little bit because it has so many points to work with. And uh, we would like to create a new surface using this particular feature line. So let's just add it to our surf surface definition. Let's create another one. I'll call it FG Island uh, 2, just to have something new over there. And here, I could just accept the defaults, but because I know that there's so many points over here and then they're going to be slow and my civil 3D down, I can use something that civil 3D refers to as weeding. So essentially taking only a subset of all these points and that the feature line has. So I just um, ask it to only take one point every, I don't know, let's say 0 0.5. 0 0.5 meters in this case. And supplementing factor will be the opposite. If I had too little geometry and I would like it to be subdivided, then I would uh, say supplemented every 50 centimeters. But in this case, I want to get rid of the excessive points. So hit OK. And then what I should be presented with in a second is exactly the, the kind of errors that you would also uh, have. So first of all, you can see that there is uh, there's a lot of triangulation happening that we actually want to keep. Uh, but if I se select this this object, it's a flat surface. Okay, nothing surprising over here. But then these triangles, they are unnecessary. And there is essentially two ways of dealing with these. One way is uh, by selecting my surface. And in the context sensitive menu, I would just go under edit surface uh, same place where you'll be swapping edge, you can actually delete some of them. And then I would just, you know, come from this side and maybe try to eyeball it and say, you know what, I don't like these triangles and then delete, uh, sorry, uh, these lines over here, delete them, delete these ones, delete these ones. And this way you could like sort of like try and clean it up. But you can see there's always a little bit of left, uh, a little bit of these left. And then each time you would change the geometry, you would need to do it maybe again. Um, so for some use cases, it definitely works, but sometimes it's way easier. I just, I'll just un undo everything what I did. Uh, so this delete surface line. And there is a smarter way of doing, uh, dealing with these excessive triangles. And it works as long as you have a closed boundary defining your surface. In our case, we have that. We have this feature line which is over here and it has, um, it's a, it's a closed feature line that was created from this spline. So what I can do is I can go to my FG Island 2 definition, twirl this one open and 
select this particular feature line as a boundary. So I just right click on it, say add, and then which type of boundary is it? And this is an outer boundary. It can be you know, different kinds, but let's just focus on this one, focus on this one. And it's a non-destructive break line. So we don't want to it to mess up our geometry. So we accept the defaults over here. And then you see, because I had it selected, the feature line, then it automatically added it and it got rid of all the excessive triangles that we didn't want. So again, looking at it in, in three dimensions, we can see that there is there is this uh, shape that we, that we wanted to work with, no excessive triangles. So if you have you know any kind of shape that, for example, uh, if I would be creating a surface out of these, this kind of shape, and then it will be closing on its own over here, then there will be some triangulation happening on the outside, just at the same shape as, as boundary. It didn't happen over here because there's no concavi uh, concavity to this particular shape. But this, uh, the moment you introduce these kind of concave shapes, it is going to introduce additional triangulation, which you need to deal with either by uh, deleting excessive lines manually or adding a boundary to your surface. So we have covered all these points over here, and we can uh, move to, to another um, another item on the list where we're essentially trying to tie in surfaces together. All right, so if I look at both of these surfaces in Object Viewer, um, I can see if I look closely that this particular, you know, the blue surface, the design surface, doesn't really match with the uh, with the existing ground surface. So here it's flying in the air, and then whereas over here it's cutting into it, but there's no smooth transition between these two. And you know, depending on how well you you can read three-dimensional uh, shapes, geometries on top of each other, sometimes it's a bit difficult to navigate uh, in the 3D viewport when you have two surfaces of different size. So the outside is, is very big, Whereas the, the smaller one, um, it's just not easy to, to see and read what's happening. Um, so what helps is, is just grow, <clears throat> is using cross sections. And then the easiest way to do it is just to create a line. So I just hit L on my keyboard, accept the default. And then I will just draw the, this line over here in the top view. And when I select it, I can right click anywhere and then just select uh, quick profile over here and it's going to ask me which surfaces do I want this line to sample and I'm actually only interested in looking at the existing ground and my FG island surface so I can just uncheck these uh, and then check existing ground and FG island hit OK next thing that Civil 3D is asking me is to select the origin point for the profile view. So I just zoom out a little bit and then put it somewhere over here. And I'm being presented with a panorama window event saying that a quick profile has been created and there's a warning uh, telling me that this is a temporary object and will be deleted as soon as I hit save or exit the drawing. So just to demonstrate that if I were to just, you know, save this button, like suddenly like the this profile disappears. So don't worry, it's by design. It's actually only meant to be a temporary thing. But again, it's very easy to recreate. Select the line, right click, quick profile, uh, confirm which ones do I want to sample, and then put them over here. And again, the same information. Okay, so first first thing that I can see is that it's, you know, it's a bit odd, right? It's cutting through some geometry, but um, but it doesn't look right. And why is it so? It's because Civil 3D is essentially a, a legacy road design piece of software. And traffic engineers and hydraulic engineers, they love looking at their profiles in an exaggerated view on, this, uh, on the y-axis. So to counter for that, we need to change the display style of that. So while I have uh, the profile view selected, then I can go into the properties, style, and just, um, you know, all these that come by default, 
they actually uh, they have this exaggeration turned on so i need to go to create and edit and again here i just need to make sure that i'm editing current selection and I can just create my own. So let's call it landscape view. And so that's under the information tab. And then our, under the graph tab, I can see that vertical exaggeration is at the moment at 10. So if I just change it to one, it's going to, uh, Silver so 3D is going to adjust all the corresponding numbers. And uh, I can hit okay and okay. And it immediately it just, you know, uh, goes back to showing me something that's uh, that I'm a little bit more used to viewing. Okay, now I could essentially, you know, try and reason what it, what this is doing and then go back and forth and I would have to zoom in and out. It's a little bit tedious. So what I can do is I can click on this little minus sign over here and then say go viewport configuration and go to either horizontal or vertical, whichever you prefer. I think horizontal would uh, work quite nicely. And what it essentially does, it splits my view so that I can zoom in on this one and in the bottom viewport, zoom in on the actual geometry. So now you can see that it's a dynamic uh, draw, drawing object. So when I move the line around, it's actually going to adapt the, uh, the drawing, the profile view as well. So it's showing me where is it that I'm, that I'm cutting. So if I move it out completely, the FG Island disappears and then now I can understand a little bit better where I am and just to click between these viewports it activates uh, the the one that's that has a focus over here you can see with this blue um, frame around it and then I can navigate using my typical navigation commands okay so now that we have this we can see that uh, it confirms our suspicion from the 3d view that this particular surface is hovering over in the air, at least in this location. Whereas if I go somewhere here, it you can you can see here that my little dent is below the existing ground. So this is the existing ground. This is the FG island in my case. So I just go back, and I would like it actually to match perfectly. And there is two ways of of doing that and I'll show you both but just for the sake of the tutorial I'll just maximize this viewport again so I clicked on this plus sign over here and I'm just maximizing it so that you have a little bit of a better view of what's going on if I was working with a bigger screen I would have more space over there I would most probably have kept both of these on to get a little bit more insight into what I'm doing but essentially what we're trying to do is we have this underlying feature line over here and we want it to touch the existing ground surface perfectly so that each and every single vertex over here is actually aligned with the uh, with the existing surface right now it is not the case so by selecting the feature line i have access to again the edit elevations uh, this button has to be turned on to the edit elevations menu and then there is this button in the third row over here which says elevations from surface so what i can do is i can set elevations from a given surface for the entire feature line and i need to be careful which one do i choose so i'm, I'm going to choose the existing ground surface and then there is a question that civil 4d is asking me hey do you want me to insert the elevation points only there where you have a, a vertex for your feature line or do you want to also insert points everywhere where this feature line is crossing additional uh, triangles from the existing ground surface so so to make this a little bit visual i just canceled out of there and i'm going to change this one to triangles and then you can see how many triangles the existing ground surface has maybe let's just call it triangles proposed so the, this is the blue one, this is the other one. And I know it's hard, hard to read here, but this is the feature line and it will be crossing a lot of its triangles where it doesn't necessarily have an elevation point. So Civil 3D will, will help me out here and it will introduce additional, um, additional elevation points every time there is this crossing. Okay, so again, select feature line, uh, set elevations from 
surface, which surface should be, it should be existing ground. Do I want these intermediate grade breakpoints? Yes, please. Okay. And then, and then it's going to ask me, okay, which one, which uh, feature line do you want me to apply this modification to it? So I need to select essentially again the same feature line. And you can already see that it has done something. The triangles over here, they represent the actual geometry points that I had. And the circles, they represent all the crossings with the underlying triangles from the existing ground. And I confirm by hitting enter. And now um, I can see that, you know, let's just take maybe it step by step. So let's take the surface to our object viewer. And you can see that it's not a smooth line anymore, right? It has changed a little bit. So these are a little bit longer over here and, and these are probably a bit shorter and then there are, you know, there are the, all of these triangles have varying endings to it. If I again split my screen, so restore uh, my viewport, it's going to remember the last configuration that I had. And you can see right now, these surfaces, they match perfectly. And then I can verify that by moving uh, my cut line wherever I want. And then you can see that it matches uh, essentially everywhere. Also here, like there is, there is at least uh, the surfaces would touch with each other, right? And then, so again, I just zoom out a little bit over here and to prove the point that whenever I cut it, it will always match. And so I'll just restore that, maximize this viewport to give you a little bit more screen estate. When would I use this this approach i would definitely use it wherever i'm creating hills or maybe maybe holes in the ground so like little ponds or, or swales that will be a valid approach to use and also in i would also only use that approach if i'm sure that i want to tie into the existing ground without modifying it too much remember when i'm applying this this command, so again, set um, elevations from surface, I don't have to tie it to the existing ground. I could have tied it to, to a pr proposed surface. So you can imagine a scenario where uh, we would have had this platform that would be designed by us and would represent, I don't know, let's say a parking lot with our particular uh, grading. And then within this parking lot, I would like to have introduced a swale, which is like this. Right, and let's put it in the center. And I would like it to collect all the water from, from my parking lot. Then I would create this um, surface based off of this spline over here that I would have converted to a feature line. And then I would ask this spline to actually sample not the existing ground that's underneath because I would be overriding it with my, uh, with my parking surface, but I would then uh, assign the elevations to the to this particular feature line from my parking lot surface. So you can be creative with that. And um, this is uh, this is essentially us covering the elevation from surfaces, quick profiles, and looking at the vertical exaggeration. What we want to do sometimes is, however, we want to create different kinds of surfaces that would have a little bit more uh, control over how we transition over here. So essentially here in the approach that I just showed you, we looked at the existing ground and we said it's perfect as it is and then we don't want any transition. We just want this line at the bottom of the, let's call it a hill here of this island. We wanted to, to find the existing ground as it was. And let's do another uh, example to, to show, you, show you a different approach. For this, I would need to undo the modifications that I, uh, that I have introduced. So I'll just go to undo, undo the uh, group of commands, group of commands, feature elevations from surface. So I can undo multiple commands over here. And it brought me back all the way here. Try, I'll just change the uh, display style again. And just to verify that it's still a feature line, 
but uh, it is in a flat feature line. I can see that, that it has all the elevations set at 5.8 meters. Okay, so how would I, if I wanted to have more control over what's going on there, I would use the command called grading over here. So under the home tab, under create and design, there's a grading command. Click it and then cre grading uh, creation tools is the one that you want to go with. And then the way it works is, I mean, there's a few commands within this command that you need to sort of like click through and you're always going from left to right in, in these uh, menus. So let's start, let's start with the first one. Create, you need to create a grading group. And essentially what it's telling Civil 3D is, you know, just group some geometry together and then if they are within the same group, they're going to interact with each other. If they're in separate groups, they will not see each other, they will ignore each other. So I can call it island grading. Do I want it to create a surface automatically? Yes, please. Uh, how do I want to display the surface? Let's just accept default. And then what is the tessellation spacing? It essentially means if you have uh, you know, these kind of organic shapes, the tighter this number here is going to be, the more uh, correct the surface is going to be rep represented. So let's just you know, turn it down to one meter. And then volume-based surface, it um, tells Civil 3D if we're going to be doing volume calculations. So comparisons between cut and fill, which surface to compare against. So we can just check this box over here and say, okay. And then now it's going to ask me uh, for, you know, it, it wants to create this surface. I just need to accept the, the default. So this was the first icon over here, setting the grading group. Then we can skip over the next three icons and then go to this drop down menu. And there is different types of grading. And you know, you can explore these on your own, but then what we care about is grading to a surface, right? So we want to match the proposed one with the existing one. And we can just say uh, that there is a there is a predefined setup for us over here. And um, we can also skip this particular menu over here, this button, and then go one to the right, and it says create grading. So yes, finally we can create it. And Again, select the feature that we're interested in. We're interested in the outermost line over here because I have my selection cycling enabled. I'm prompted to select the, the particular one from the drop down menu. And it's going to ask, hey, do you want to weed the feature line or continue grading, grading without uh, it being weeded? And then again, I'll, I'll just let it weed it. Uh, what will be the, the weeding factors and it will highlight the points in red that it's going to, to delete. It thinks that they are obsolete. So let's just uh, accept the defaults over here and it will, it will tell you six out of 64 vertices will be weeded. Why is it important? If you have you know 600 of these, Civil 3D might slow down on you. So if it tells you that it wants to weed uh, some features, definitely go for it but make sure that you're not removing too much accuracy over here. So if I were to up this to 50 meters, it will, and maybe I would need to change the, you know, the angle over here to five degrees, then it will remove half of the, uh, half of the, uh, the vertices, which would probably change the shape. So that's not necessarily what I want. So let's do one degree. Let's see, maybe 0 0.5, go back to 0 0.5 and change that to 10. So let's essentially accept the default. Okay, which side do I want to grade to? Well, towards the inside, I'm, I already have my surface that represents a hill, so I don't want to touch that. I want to grade outside, so I just click here. Do I want to apply it to the entire length? Yes, of course. That's what I care about in this particular case. And then it's uh, going to ask me many more questions, right? So I'm in a cut situation. So my new surface is below the existing surface. What should I do then? Well, I would like it to follow a slope or a grade. I feel more comfortable uh, in typing in slopes. So that's the slope. And then how steep should the slope be? Let's do something like very gentle. So maybe let's do five to one. And then in a fill situation, so essentially when, when my 
newly proposed surface is above the existing ground. I also want to operate in slopes and I want it to be 5 to 1 as well. So I'm just typing that in. And give it a second, you know, it needs to calculate everything. And then what you can see here is that, first of all, I'm still in the command. So I could start applying the same grading uh, command to, to other feature lines, but I'm just going to escape out of it. And, and I can see right now that uh, a few things happen. So first of all, there is a, an island grading surface that has been created over here. And it, uh, visually, I can see it over here. I can highlight it and it says island grading and has a style of contours one and five. Okay, so that's perfect. But it's also triangulated over here in different colors. So one, the green color stands for fill and the red color stands for cut. And then if I just look at this particular surface in isolation, then I can see that it shows me you know, how I have this flat 5.7, I believe it was, uh, spline or feature line representing uh, the bottom of my, of my island. And then with one to five slope, I'm filling in to reach the existing gr ground over here. And here I'm cutting out to, to reach the, the existing ground in a cut situation. So if I were to take the uh, like multiple surfaces, so my 10 surface representing my FG island, my grading group over here, and my existing ground together, into object viewer, then I could see that it matches perfectly. Right? So with one to five slope, it's always going to fill uh, where where there is the um, where it sees existing ground. So essentially, how it works is you you can imagine that you're walking along this ridge uh, that we have artificially introduced, and then shooting out rays out to the outside, and then you draw them as long uh, and you're following a one to five slope and you draw them as long as uh, until it hits the uh, the surface that we ask it to to look for and again I, I just chose it chose existing ground but it doesn't have to be existing ground it could have been also a proposed surface okay let's say that we look at the results and we say hmm you know what like one to five is actually very very uh, gentle and we would like it to be a little bit steeper so how can we do that Rather than creating, so again, under this gradient creation tools, rather than hitting this button over here, create grading, we can create uh, hit this little arrow right next to it, and uh, sorry, uh, go one to the right and say edit grading. And then it's going to ask me, select in the point in the grading. And so I essentially, I just need to hover over any of these, and then I can uh, you see the highlights, and then I can just click on it, so if you will know Okay, this is the island grading that we're talking about. And I'm still comfortable working with slopes, but I don't want it to be 5 to 1. Let's just make it 3 to 1. And just to prove a point, I'll only do this in fill because I, I would like my cut to be to be still 5 to 1. So I just leave it there. So you can see that um, I need to update, rebuild uh, to match it. And... I believe I was. I only changed in, in uh, cut um, over here, so so you can see that this extent has changed right now. So I can prove it again. Well, uh, cut format. Yes, I only changed the cut. So actually, I did the opposite of what I wanted to do. So I want this to be gentle, but I want the fill to be uh, three to one. So I want this to be a little bit steeper. Uh, fill format slope. And then this should be three to one. And then let it update. And you can see here, I need to force it, even though it's set to rebuild automatic. I just need to right click and rebuild it manually. And you can see here, um, I have my gentle slope in the cut and a little bit steeper in the fill. So, but just to, just to show that it's still doing what it's supposed to do. And now I didn't take the and the um, island surface, just to make it a little bit more clear of what it's doing, it still matches the existing ground, just the slope is a bit different. 
And here, because we're in a cut situation, I cannot see it. But if I sort of like look underneath, so I'm looking at the same surface from below, you can see it here, that's actually there. Okay, perfect. And then when would we use this approach, right? This approach would definitely, I would recommend you to use on your, on your paths. So right now this path is also floating in the air and it's above the existing ground. But we want it to be tied in. So how would I do it? I would just close out of this command. I would say create grading, grading creation tools. We want to create a new group, um, group right? So group name, we actually want to create a new grading. Grading group would be grading path. Um, it remembers my choices from last time, so that's great. I want to create a volume-based surface, yes please, okay, accept the defaults again, okay. We can move through all these because we, uh, we want to grade to the surface as well. And then create uh, which feature line do we want to use. Let's use the one on the right-hand side, feature line, uh, select the grinding side is to the right. Do I want it to apply to the entire length? Yes. In, sl in cut, I want it to be, just to exaggerate, I want it to be 10 to 1. And in fill, I also want it to be 10 to 1. And then here you can see that this and escape out of the command right now. And here you can see that this is the infill. And because it's only green, there's a little bit of red here. So this tells me that there's a little bit of cut, but essentially, only because I have this surface now, uh, and then let me take the uh, path as well into the object viewer. We can see that this is how much would have to be filled if we wanted to integrate this particular uh, this particular path into the existing ground. And this would be a very very typical workflow. You'll be uh, you'll be designing new surfaces with you know very very exact grading and elevation um, input. So two and a half percent cross slope, you know, 1% uh, longitudinal slope. And then you would like uh, your surfaces to tie to the existing ground. And uh, doing it on the other side is, is exactly um, the same. We can actually leave it within the, the same grading group. So it tells me what is the active one over here, group grading path. So I don't need to be creating a grading group for every single entity because I know it's the same path. I can, I can remain the command, create grading group, select the feature. Uh, this will be my feature line on this side. Do I want to apply the entire length? Yes. And here I can just have a different slope. So let's do it five to one and fill also five to one. And you can see here, we have created it. And since, since the command is active, I can select another feature line that we have over here. This side, the same length. And now I, I'm just hitting enter all the time. I'm accepting the values that we had from, from last time. And here you can see it almost didn't do anything, right? It's a very little piece that has to be filled over here. And this is a little, uh, very, very small piece as well over here. And what does it tell me? It tells me that we actually did a great job designing this particular uh, part of the path because we are um, maybe just rebuild it uh, just to make sure that, that everything is still intact and that we haven't messed up any of the geometry. No, it's still good. And uh, what it tells me is that we did a good job designing uh, the particular elevations for, for my path. I would be getting worried if, if these um, these surfaces that we create, these grading surfaces, will be hitting out, you know, like hundreds of meters or even 10 or, or 15 meters to the, to the side. Because you need to imagine what does it mean. It just means that this uh, a, a bulldozer, right, that, that's preparing these, um, uh, these trenches uh, to create a path in would have to, like, literally, you know, plow over, like, hundreds of square meters of unnecessary terrain. So um, either if, if it happens to you, it can mean two things. Either you have uh, chosen too gentle of a slope, 
So if you went with 100 to 1 or 1,000 to 1, it will be almost a horizontal line, and it will be just going forever to, to reach that slope. Or it just means that your elevations that you chose for the, for the uh, path that you're designing are way too far either below or above the surface. So it just needs to, to go for like a very, very long time to, to hit, hit it. And again, this is something that you, you would develop an intuition for, how to, how to grade um, different terrain features that, so that you can still have your minimum slope requirements fulfilled, but you're not moving too much earth around. So, so we've covered grading, uh, creating different gradings and editing these, right? So again, like to edit, you would just need um, to hit edit. And here, because we have different groups, so either I can hover over this particular one and, and I will be editing this, um, this grading over here, or I can, using the same command, just hover over this one and I'll, I'll be able to, uh, to change the, the island. <clears throat> okay, and now how can we make all of these come together, right? So we have meticulously created all these surfaces and I'm only just giving you a few examples. Uh, the same would be true uh, for for your steps, for example, right? If you want to tie the bottom part in, uh, so let, let's just say, take it to the object viewer. If you wanted to make sure that this particular edge is tying into the existing ground, you would also take the underlying feature line and then create grading to the sides, or you can also just snap it to, uh, to so let me just grab the right one, feature line. You can also just snap it to the existing ground using elevations from surface. Uh, both, uh, in this case, I would say both approaches are invalid. Maybe the um, sampling the surface uh, is actually a little bit better idea than, than grading away from it. But it's up to you to decide. But then essentially what uh, I would like you to do is I would like you to create the entire, um, like recreate all your surfaces, or not recreate, but then add, um, tie them into the existing ground, right? So if you have three islands, you need to do it for all three of them. You need to make sure they that all work together. Uh, we haven't talked about the river corridor yet, but it's essentially the same thing as um, as creating um, as creating staircases, right? Because you you want to have a top edge and you want to have a bottom edge of your river. And uh, so maybe I'll just do it quickly over here. So my this is a spline that I would um, I would convert to a polyline. So p added yes precision accept. And then now I have my spline uh, as elevation is at zero. I just need to understand what would be the smart elevation to put it on. So I'm adding a label spot elevation. Uh, close 6.8, 6.8. Okay, but what about my my steps? Where do they end? So I'm just going to add a. Okay, so 5.8. This is my target elevation over here for my steps. Okay, uh, this is the the top of the first step. So I would like this line actually, which is representing my my ridge of the of the river to be the top line and I would like it to be at 5.8 as well. So I'll just, um, this is still a polar line so I can just change it over here, 5.8. This is my elevation for the entire one. Feature line, create uh, features from objects. Um, yes, everything except as, as default. I just uh, close this one not to take away the and the pressure screen real estate. And what I can do now is I can just offset it by 0 0.1, so 10 centimeters. And I'm going to offset, offset it inwards and I'm going to specify an elevation difference. I would like it to be one meter below the existing one. And then I'll do the same on the other side where, where I have to find my river over here. So again, this is a spline, so I'll just move quickly over here, change, change, yes, uh, everything 
accept as defaults um, feature line let's put it as well at 5.8 uh, just to have um, the same elevation on both sides now actually let's put it lower because this is 5.4 over here so let's put it at 5.4 as well and um, and then what I would like to do is I would like to create a feature line out of that uh, accept the defaults and I remember this one was set to 4.8 the bottom one so I want this to be offset inwards uh, by 10 centimeters inwards and I want it to end at the elevation of 4.8 so that it matches the other one as well and now I'll select these two feature lines and I'll select these two and I'll add them to a surface that doesn't exist yet so I want to create it I'll call it river and then keep this style over there okay and then I'll uh, say yes weeding factors every one meter and then I would like to have it supplement some information if I don't have it there every five meters so at least every five meters there is a point and first of all it created um, some some great features for me over here and then when I take it to the object viewer I can see that okay there is a one meter drop there is a I believe 70 centimeters drop on this side so we have done what we were aiming for and uh, but we have these additional triangles that we need to get rid of and then how do we do it if we don't have a continuous line going uh, like continuous boundary right we cannot add anything as boundary here so what i would need to do here is i would really need to select these edit the surface delete lines and then i would just go window select over here and uh, these definitely these as well and i would then window select out and window select out from here um, so I got rid of the majority of them I would probably need to do a little bit more cleanup and uh, zoom in on that and then this way I have created like a very basic river corridor it's not too exciting as you can see right it's only one meter drop maybe you want it to be more maybe you want it to be less you would decide and um, and then actually what what I realized now is that uh, I didn't really want to great the existing uh, surface at all with, with these grading groups right um, I actually wanted to uh, to maybe grade to the to the new surface that I have created right because I want my my islands to be growing out of out, out of the proposed surface so just to uh, just to emphasize this point I remember that the name of the surface is river so I can select this grading group over here and I can just go into edit grading and uh, this is not going to, to cut it sorry uh, we need to go to the grading editor over here and it's asking me which surface am I actually targeting so I want to be targeting my okay I maybe did it too fast I'll just uh, do it one more time a little bit slower so select the grading to bring up the context sensitive menu over here and select grading editor over here and it's asking me or telling me that currently the surface that we're targeting with both our cut and fill is the existing ground so when I click on it I have this button that appears here I click on that and I can select my river surface hit OK and then it will automatically update it takes it a while and then here you can see that all of that is actually happening in a fill situation because I'm, I'm plowing over a lot of terrain over there and then to show you what's going on I will take these two surfaces into object viewer and you can see the top one is flying over so my island is flying over the, the river surface that I just created and if I take all of them in, so this one, this one, and that one, and put it here, you can see that the grading has been created and it matches perfectly. I could have also, you know, because it's such a simple surface, I could have um, could have 
and just projected the, the points over there. Okay, but why is it a, um, in, like the, the cool thing about that approach using grading is that it's perfectly parametric approach. So if I was to introduce one more, let's say I want, you know, thinking about it in terms of reverse iteration, I want my main current to go somehow like that, right, in between these, uh, these islands. So what I would do is I would, first of all, I would maybe temporarily hide this guy. So just change it to border only so that it's not in the way and I can see what I'm doing. And then I would just take a spline and then I would indicate the, uh, the current line that I want my river to sort of have. And it's not perfect, but I'm not going to spend too much time trying to fix it. It's not the purpose. Um, maybe let's remove this one. Yeah, I just said I will not spend time doing it and I'm doing it. So <laughs> I guess it's uh, stronger than me. Anyway, uh, P edit, we know drill. Um, precision except the default and we already have a polyline and I want it to be lower than my elevation over here so 4.8 let's say I want it to be at 3.5 meters just to make it a little bit more um, interesting and so I have this ridge over here I want to create a feature line out of that uh, feature lines from objects yes and now I don't want it to be a flat thing, right? Like a river has to follow some sort of a slope. So I'll use this, uh, right now everything is 3.5. I use the command that we already talked about, set grade slope between points. I start over here and I say elevation should be 3.5. I'll go all the way to the end, click again and specify grade. I want it to be minus, let's say 1%. And uh, just to verify that uh, we have uh, we have introduced a change. So st starting from 3.5, we're following a 1% grade all the way here. And in the end, we have an elevation of 1.3 meters. So this is going to be a, an extreme drop, but okay. Uh, it's, it's supposed to um, visualize the, the change that we're introducing. So right now, this particular feature line doesn't belong to any surface yet. So I just add it to my river surface as a break line. And I'll, I'll accept the last um, defaults that I entered last time. And now I just need to select my tin surface, which represents my river. And I'm going to change it to this place type for, from border only to triangles. And you can see that you know it tri triangulates differently. So that it has introduced this particular ridge over here and then I just uh, want to show you how it looks like over here you can see that it has a nice slope to it right and then so so the I, I should have actually continued with this line over there and I shouldn't have stopped like this either but uh, but it's uh, showing you that that you can create a nice nicely looking organic terrain with steep slopes on the sides you could have moved these um, these feature lines more more inwards it's up to your design, but essentially now you can control the shape of it using uh, both the feature line editor to, to create to change the shape and the elevation editor to change the elevation. But now that I have that, I just need to select my grading and then essentially my island grading. I just need to rebuild it. And my grading group uh, should be Let's see what it does. I think it has updated automatically already. Or has it not? No, it hasn't. So we need to update our grading. And this is happening under sites, site one. We have grading groups and this is my island grading, which I can refresh over here. Mm, edit grading, I need to do it here. Uh, format, we just keep what we had before. Has it uh, grading path, river. I see that's one of these situations where I need to probably rebuild a few things um, to, uh, 
uh, to arrive at the desired result. If it doesn't do it, I can just uh, recreate it, so I'll essentially delete it, and then uh, go to my grading creation tools. Uh, I need to recreate the, the group so that I had before. So let's just call it, let me check whether it's there. No, it's, it's over there. So island grading, grade the surface, create, and the surface right now it thinks it should be existing ground so maybe i should uh, i'll just ex escape out of that again my island grading but here i can i can change the surface that we're actually targeting so it should be the river okay select this one uh, feature line go to the outside yes slope uh, let's do three to one and cut even though we don't have any and three to one and fill yeah okay interesting and that that might be one of the examples where where the surface that uh, or the let me just have a look at it from, from the side where the uh, parameters that we chose for for the grading group to operate within were a little bit too uh, generous and so you can see that it has some errors over here which are most probably because uh, you know it's confused about these triangles over here and so sometimes it's trying to go up sometimes it's trying to go down so what would uh, what would make sense is would be to select that edit it and then not the surface but select the uh, grading group which is represented by these ones and edit this grading and then so in the slope I would just make it maybe one to one and then in fill I would also make it one to one and you see now it uh, now it should be a much cleaner surface that we that we have created because um, as I told you right like you need to pay attention to sometimes you're you're telling silver 3d to go in a very very gentle slope and it's just trying to go out too far and it's reaching its maximum distance that it can work with uh, so changing it to one to one and then now when i take all of them together uh, into the object viewer you can see that that all of them match perfectly here okay and so now that we have all these here we might we might say okay but how do we combine all of these surfaces and this is actually pasting them uh, all into one this is the this is the command that we're going for so what we would do is we would actually create a new surface and let's really call this fg fg final right so this is my finished ground final surface and in the moment it's in it's an empty one but I can twirl it open and I can, first of all, I want to, and you sort of like always need to start with the bigger surfaces and then gradually walk, you, walk yourself uh, towards the smaller and smaller ones. So you want to paste the bigger one first into the empty container and I can do it using edit, right click on it, paste surface. And I'm telling it to paste the river surface into this empty container. So right now, you know, FG final essentially equals my river surface. But then I can right click on it and again say paste surface and then I would paste this um, island grading surface onto it, it's, you know, the outside of it. I'm pasting it in. And then yet another time I would paste the actual island, FG island. This is this one. So by that I have essentially this is my FG final I can verify that here and object viewer and you can see that it's one surface that is consisting of these three surfaces that I have created but remember I have started from the outermost biggest one and then I moved gradually into into adding another surface over here that are smaller and smaller because if I change the, the order of these, then I would have started with the small one and then pasted the, the river at the end. It would have essentially erased everything that, that it sees. And to prove the point a little bit more, 
I'll just, um, you know what, I'll just delete all these first. So I'm deleting the ones that I just added. And I'll rebuild it so that it just is again an empty one. And then, and this is a very typical workflow when you would be doing um, some, uh, well, essentially any, any grading in an existing graph situation, you would always create your FG final and you would start with adding a, mm, pasting a surface and start with the existing ground. So you're sort of like creating a copy of it, right? And now you're, you're telling um, Silver 3D, you know what, like within my finished ground, I want to keep you know, the majority of the existing ground, but I want to override portions of it by pasting my river surface into it. And you see, like it sort of like cut it out from it. So it overrides this particular part. That's why you always start with the outermost ones and then you sort of like go inside. So just to show you how this works here, we have this, this massive, massive uh, existing ground surface, but it has this beautifully cut out um, river shape. And what's going on on the edges here? Well, uh, I haven't actually tied it in correctly. So this would be your job to also create some grading that that's going away from the from the edge that you have created into the existing ground, right? So so this like if I see something like that, that's definitely unacceptable, right? You want nice transition edges, and you know how to do it. We just did it over here. Uh, you just uh, need to go through the entire drawing and and apply it uh, apply it to to have beautifully clean transitions. And then now that we have pasted, you can see here under the uh, definition. Edit, I can see that uh, first of all we pasted the existing ground surface, then we pasted the river, and now again we want to, uh, we can just select this particular surface and we have access to the same options over here edit surface and paste surface. So the same as right clicking and pasting surface over here. Uh, so paste, and which one do I want to paste? I want, remember, we're going from the outside to the inside, so I want my island grading has been added and now again I want to add one more paste surface and it'll be my FG island, this one. So this way we have an entire finished ground final surface which looks like that. So it has my it has my uh, added river with at least one island. And uh, so what I would like you to do now is I would like you to continue with this procedure and I'm just going to turn this one off uh, for a moment. So just to just change the display style. I would like you to go through your drawing now and then identify the surfaces that you still need to create. Right? So you need to create multiple paths. You need to have your, um, have your platforms integrated with these and then they need to be tied into either the existing ground or maybe they need to be tied into another proposed surface like I did here with my island, um, you know, sh uh, matching the, the river surface. And once you have done these individually, then I want you to create a combined surface, right? So FG final in my case should encompass all the mm, non-altered existing ground surface that you would start with and then gradually you would start adding uh, your additional surface to it. You might ask, does it matter about the order of these? It does matter as long as they overlap, but it doesn't really matter whether I start with the river surface and then add this platform because there is no overlap between them. Uh, but here, for example, I would be careful uh, if I wanted to create grading for this particular path over here because it's um, it's so close to the edge of my river, then I would probably first create the river and I would grade this to the existing ground with a gentle slope. And only then would I grade the, uh, the path surface back to the grading 
of this river surface, if it makes sense, right? So this would be tying into the existing um, ground, whereas this would be tying to the river because you want a nice transition. And uh, But then, for example, this particular hill over here, uh, in my case, I will be only tying to the existing ground because there is no overlap anymore. And, and definitely this, this path should be tying to the existing ground. No questions about that. And yeah, uh, go through it. Uh, there is a lot to digest here, uh, but essentially you can probably also already see a pattern. It's mostly the same commands that I'm repeating. So, so it's maybe four or five commands that I'm constantly referring to. And once you get a grasp um, of, of these, you'll, be, you'll realize that you can essentially grade anything. And then just you know remember to go and you you also see me doing this all the time just double check in 3d whatever whatever you're, whatever you're doing in 2d whether it makes sense okay that's all for today good luck and uh, see you soon